in the previous tutorial, I showed you how you can use a set of if statements to create a new variable, in this case attend to, from an old variable called attend. Remember when you're creating new variables, you can name them anything that you want as long as they're not named, um, don't, just don't give them the same name as, as a variable that's already in the data set. So it's often useful to just um, take the put the name the new variable just the, the name of the old variable with a two at the end. Note also there's no spaces between uh, attend and two. Each variable name has to have it has to be a single word. Uh, there can't be any spaces between um, attend and two here. Right now I'm going to show you just another way to do the same thing, um, to create a new variable, attend to, based on the old variable attend. So I'll just go ahead, I can highlight this new variable I created, click delete, it's gone, and I can just recreate it. Um, just as a note, notice that if I uh, delete that and it, I made a mistake, I can just highlight those same set of if statements in the execute. Click run. The statements are echoed back out on the output screen. If I go back to the variable view, I just see the data, the uh, variable attend to has been recreated again. I can highlight variable labels and variable and value labels. Again, these commands are echoed back at you, and when I go back to variable view, attend to is now has a value, a variable label, and the values are labeled as well. So that's one of the advantages of having syntax because if you make a mistake, like for example, if I had made a mistake in one of these if statements, or if I had made a mistake in labeling one of these values, I could just delete, go back, delete the new variable I'd created correct the error in the syntax and then just rerun the syntax and uh, correct the mistake. Now in this case I'm going to go and show you a new way, just another way, um, to create a new uh, variable out of an old variable. People sometimes prefer if statements but other people prefer the recode statement. In a recode statement, you would type recode, then the name of the old variable, and then what I would do is, in parentheses, put the values of the old variable, zero, and then the equal sign and the value of the new variable that you, uh, value that you want to assign it to. So zero is becoming one, just to do the same thing as the if, if statement up there. One, and in this case I can take through three, so one to three are becoming two. That just does the same thing as the if statements that I'm highlighting there. Four through six become three. Those are the if statements that I'm doing there and it's doing the same thing down here. Again, this is doing the same thing as the if statements. It's just some people prefer this way and some people prefer the other way, depending on what's easier for you. And then finally, seven and eight I can assign to four. At the end, I would type into, because I'm recoding attend into a new variable called attend2. Because I'm creating a new variable, I type execute period. Remember there's a period at the end of the recode and a period at the end of execute. I highlight these and run them. The command echoes back in the output screen and it creates that new variable called attend2. This variable should be identical to the attend2 that I created previously. I'm just showing you just a slightly different way to do it. Um, 
the syntax is much more compact, but some people might find the logic of the if statements easier to follow. Again, then I could just simply run the value labels and the variable labels. They echo back in the output state, uh, screen. I go back to the variable view and I see that variable attend2 has been labeled and it's been given values like that. And then I can go ahead and rerun the cross tabs year by attend2. And I see that uh, the same table that I produced before. Now I can interpret the table saying 35.3% of respondents who said they, uh, who in 1972, I'm sorry, 35.3% of respondents in 1972 said that they attended religious services every week or more. And that number fluctuates year to year. One possibility, um, one possible thing you, you can do uh, to help with the interpretation of the crosstab is what's called a chi-square statistic. The chi-square test statistic, like other test statistics, um, gives you a sense of whether any of the changes that you're seeing across years are simply likely to be 